Hi everyone. Yes, we are expecting Santa Ana winds for this weekend, December 9th through 10th. In fact, the Santa Ana winds should return again mid next week. This means very dry air over the region, elevated fire danger, especially this weekend uh, across the Inland Empire area. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist with National Weather Service. Here's a summary. Uh, Santa Ana winds, uh, event number nine. Locally strong wind gusts in the wind corridors, and we'll show those. Uh, the offshore winds continue next week, but are weaker earlier in the week than another Santa Ana wind is possible. Very low humidity. Uh, the fuel moisture is dry. A lot of the dead fuel moisture is dry or a little bit below average. So there is some concern, especially in northern areas. Warming temperatures Sunday through Monday, cold at night in the mountains and high desert. These are the wind corridors that I mentioned in the prior slide. The orange areas, the most concern, and of course red even higher than that. Cajon Pass looks to have the strongest winds, but all of our wind corridors with the Santa Ana wind will be blowing at least moderate and occasionally strong in those areas this weekend. Looks like the peak will be on Saturday. Why are we getting Santa Ana winds still? Well, the normal peak in Southern California is December, but usually we get rain in between in December. No rain so far this December. Storm track is just too far to the east. It repeats itself on Wednesday, as you can see on the right-hand side, with another storm system. This one coming a little closer, carving across the Colorado River Valley. Now, the pressure gradient that creates the Santa Ana wind, high to low pressure, that's what picks the winds up tonight, Saturday morning. So high pressure settles over the Great Basin and then over Utah and then Colorado. Then the winds gradually weaken as we get to late Sunday. The fuel moisture is dry, it's below average. So there is a fire weather concern with the dead fuels as shown here. We've been seeing these dips this fall as the Santa Ana winds and the very dry air sucks the moisture out of our vegetation, especially the dead fuels. And that's why you see those blue lines dipping down near the record low red lines. Here's a look at our peak wind gusts. Okay, these are the peak wind gusts for the weekend. This is showing Saturday with some local wind gusts getting up over 60 miles per hour. Most of the windy areas will see 30 to 40 miles per hour, even in parts of San Diego County. Notice that across the deserts, the winds are rather light, especially on Sunday, and also around the downtown San Diego area light. But our wind corridors continue to blow even on Sunday, as shown here. So if you live in Escondido, you're still gonna be feeling the wind. If you live um, north of Lake Elsinore, you're still gonna be feeling the wind around Lake Elsinore on Sunday. How low will the humidity get? Very low. Saturday and Sunday, you'll feel it on your skin. Uh, you'll feel dry, thirsty. Our vegetation will feel that too because some of the humidity during the daytime will be below 10%, very dry, with poor recovery at night in our wind prone areas because the wind keeps the air mixed, keeps it warmer, keeps the air dry. The temperatures will be warming over the weekend, but Saturday will be quite chilly, brisk, up in the mountain areas so keep that in mind if venturing up there about a 10 degree warm up in our mountains on sunday our coastal areas mild low 70s and then warming up to the mid upper 70s on sunday check the latest hazards for your area at weather.gov or you can use this link here we're still looking at an el nino right it hasn't rained in December, but El Nino remains well-established and strong along the Equatorial Pacific Ocean, as shown here. Satellite confirms this well-established, large swath of warmer-than-usual conditions along the equator, which we call the El Nino phase. Now, we've started off really dry. In fact, some parts of the southwest are 
25% of average. Now, in our area of Southwest California, most of us so far have received about half our rainfall since the start of the new water year, October 1. But most of California is much below average. The snowpack is also really low in the state. Take a look at this. Uh, Southern Sierra Nevada, less than 25%, but about a third for most of the snowpack, starting off dry. Now the past seven days, it's been an inundation of rain, Pacific jet stream driving atmospheric rivers into the Pacific Northwest. Locations up there have received some areas over a foot of rain. You can see the very sharp line though with precipitation not making it south of I-80 in Central California. Now what's been going on? Well, since the start of this new water year, October, we are seeing some changes in our weather pattern in jet stream. And it's not just because we're going into winter. This could be some effect from El Nino. Unusual storminess in the central North Pacific, north of Hawaii there as shown here. So this is something to keep an eye on exactly where this sets up because this jet stream setup is the key to who gets the most precipitation. Now, so far that jet stream setup, at least the past week in early December, has been well to our north. So the main storm system and an unusually strong storm system has been parked in the Gulf of Alaska. We just need that to shift a little bit further south. You always have an upper level ridge, the green area. You always have a low pressure area. These are anomalies though. So the low pressure stronger to the north, stronger than usual. And that's drawing that warmer, dry air further north. And the storm track stays north of us. What's the future bring us? Well, it does look like the Pacific jet stream is going to become more consolidated, potentially stronger, more focused but it's still hanging around 40 north. So what does that mean? Well, when we get near December 17th and 18th, a storm system breaks off, moves into California, but it's weakening, but it still moves into California, Northern California as shown here. Now, when we get deeper into the month, late December, potential for more consolidation, so more powerful jet stream, more of a signal you might expect with El Nino as warmth from the south and cold from the north combined together but exactly where that lines up still is uncertain. Right now it's targeted more for Northern California. Here's the outlook. So as we go into next week and the next 10 days, warmer than average conditions because of a couple Santa Ana wind events, offshore flow. But then that storm I just showed you, looks like it'll reach into the Bay Area by the 18th. What about further? into December, right before Christmas, when we all start to travel and we start thinking of doing fun things outdoors, warmer than normal conditions still in California. And the storm track looks like it still wants to go through central Northern California, Pacific Northwest. Um, not a major storm track yet, uh, but that's where it looks like it's gonna land during that period before Christmas. Now, when we look further out, late December, early January, there is some indication that late December and early January, not only will the Pacific be active, a large area an atmospheric river in the central North Pacific in the green shaded areas to the right here. But just how much of that makes it inland to the West Coast is the uncertainty even for late in the month in December.